I'm about to do something that I haven't done in like two years. I get ready with me. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jackie Ina. We have a lot of catching up to do. It's just kind of been vlogs and vibes and that has been fun. I'm not gonna lie, that has been fun, but I've been toying with the idea of slowly emphasis Emphasis on very slowly getting back on YouTube for a number of different reasons and I'm not really gonna dive into it or maybe I can't I mean it's to get ready with me like I have the time I'm gonna do glam I'm going to an event tonight and the unofficial category I literally just made this up because of this new collection I'm about to get into the unofficial category is pearls okay pearls and like flowers have been kind of my thing this season I don't know what it is so that's kind of the overall makeup look and vibe I want to go with today today's video is also done in partnership with Pandora I'm gonna be featuring pieces which I'm already I mean I'm already wearing we're gonna get into it they're absolutely stunning thank you Pandora for sponsoring today's video the Pandora essence collection is just absolutely stunning like I honestly I'm gonna be playing around with it like once I get dressed playing around with some layering playing around with some stacking that's one of my favorite things to do and like I said I've become a pearl girl and what I like about this collection is the fact that everything is so easily stackable so let's get into the makeup let's catch up if you have some place to go grab your makeup kit your brushes your cleanser because make sure you using clean brushes don't play with me nothing's changed just because i've been everywhere else but youtube it doesn't mean nothing's changed i'm still roast the girls now once a youtuber always a youtuber is crazy because no matter how easily i can snap into becoming a short form creator when it comes to going back on youtube and giving you 40 minutes 60 minutes an hour and a half of quality content talking points girl it's just too easy i can do this in my sleep the girls know when something shifts and it's so weird how like the beauty community collectively just kind of tapped out of youtube and like like there was no internal meeting. There was no internal discussion. We all just kind of dipped at the same time. We all kind of knew what to do. I mean, it's no secret that TikTok was kind of, you know, everyone's son for a while and they still kind of are. But girl, now at this point, TikTok might be banned. So <sighs> awkward. When you're a creator on every platform though, like you kind of have the advantage of being like, all right, well, if I lose one, it won't really make a difference to me. It still sucks though. It still sucks for the people that I know rely heavily on TikTok as a source of income, not only as creators, but like for their businesses. So I really hope it doesn't get banned, but I can't lie and I just the truth has to be said There are just some things that TikTok is never gonna replace for me For example, what we're doing now a long-form classic sit-down tutorial Where we can talk and chat and update each other even though it's like I, I want to say you're you're talking to me Right, you're, you're talking back to me when you're watching my tutorials, right? Okay, just making sure TikTok is fun, but it's punchy. It's quick. It's a little too fast i think i mean i hate to say this but sometimes the content can be kind of quick and mindless and i don't mean all of it because obviously i'm on there and i would like to think my content isn't mindless but it doesn't really require much you know what i'm saying like kind of low lift lower lower effort not low effort in general lower okay and this is also what i like about youtube is youtube there's very little room to be misinterpreted, mis misconstrued, but with short form content, it's punchier, it's quick. You have to kind of like edit out all the disclaimers. And sometimes I just love a good, really thorough talk through. Now, I don't necessarily wanna jump into doing the same type of content that I used to because, well, maybe for some of the reasons why YouTube kind of got boring at one point is that you can only do the same thing so many times. And I think that a lot of times people forget that YouTube is a database. So even though the video isn't the most new or that's an old apartment or an old camera, the fundamentals are still the same. You know, I think sometimes people have this kind of they're like enamored with the idea of something being updated every two weeks like done again and again and again under a new lens or with a new background but it's like this it's the same content so a lot of my like videos about beginner makeup stuff like even though it may not feel new girl that stuff is still useful we got food at home <laughs> i just I, I just you know i, I for me i kind of want to like move past the beginners or like the basics or starting from scratch you know, I, I feel like I did that for a good amount of time. Now, what I do miss YouTube for are, again, these longer talk through type content where I can really thoroughly sit through and explain something. But also, you guys tell me if you agree or disagree with this. I also feel like YouTube made me a smarter consumer. I'm not sure what it is about other platforms. This is not something that I do intentionally to be like spiteful or a hater. I'm not a hater. I really love supporting the girls and the dolls, honey. Like if you have good content, then you have good content. But I don't 
think that short form content in general is like conducive to being a smarter consumer because of the fact that like once you start really getting too descriptive or once you start explaining too much or getting a little bit too educational when it comes to reviewing a product or sharing your thoughts, I feel like people tune out. And for me, I need to go a little bit deeper than that. You know, I need to know, well, why do you like it? Because I like it is so vague. Like that don't really tell, I can't really do nothing with that. So uh, I need you to be a little bit more specific. Thank you, that, that, that'd be great, thank you. Now, some people like just being told what to do and what to buy. That's great, but that's not the reality of the average consumer. The average consumer is savvy and really loves a good thorough breakdown. And you just don't really get that on a lot of platforms that really prioritize pushing uh, this sense of urgency. Like, girl, what's the freaking rush? It's too much sometimes. I don't know what it is about my brows that looks so different when I wear my natural hair versus when I wear a wig. I think it's a hairline thing that messes with me. I don't know what it is. I feel like they're arched higher when I don't wear a wig. And then when I'm wearing a wig, I feel like I'm making them longer. I swear I know I'm tripping, but it's so weird. Does anybody else experience that? Please let me know. I don't even know what I'm wearing yet, but I do know I want my skin and complexion to be really just focused on like my face and not so much like crazy eye makeup or anything. I want it to be more about the skin. So let's color correct this background like doesn't my background look so pretty it's beautiful oh my god now my bedroom looking like a studio i wouldn't normally use this room for filming i mean it's the vibe on tiktok i people love it it does make a beautiful backdrop but like you know i also want to have a separation between like where i lay my head and like where i work for years depending on how long you've been following me i wouldn't even show my bedroom and it was like super off limits. I wouldn't film in there. I wouldn't even show it on Instagram. And then after a while, I just changed my mind. And you know what? Let that be a lesson to anyone. It doesn't matter what you got used to for one year or six months or three months or six years. If I change my mind on Tuesday, the rule starts now, period. I don't know why it's such a big deal to people when women change their mind. It's like actually so dramatic. Like, okay, that person changed their mind. Like, get over it. <laughs> no, but you said this in jail back in February. Okay, we'll go pack it up. She got out now, so you're gonna have to, you have to wrap it up. One thing I'm very grateful for right now is the fact that I do not have the wig line of death if you wear wigs and you would understand whenever i take off my wig which i just did literally two days ago i usually have this like tan line <laughs> and it's it's like it's it's always like right in the middle of my forehead it's like a space where it's like my normal color the tan line and then my normal color again so it looks even more weird and usually that happens when i'm not applying my spf high enough into like the hairline. But the thing is, is if you know anything about wigs, I mean, you wanna keep makeup and oil and like skincare, like you don't wanna put it directly right up under the wig line. So it's such a struggle, I must say. <laughs> so while you're here, I would love to know, what are you guys enjoying, loving, hating about Get Ready With Me content on YouTube? We really got deep about this on Instagram and I was saying how like, I'm just not really here for the YouTube that we know today. And I know maybe that's a little blasphemous talking about YouTube on YouTube, but it needs to be said. It needs to be said. YouTube absolutely held the crown, literally for beauty content. And you know, all good things do come to an end eventually. Like all kingdoms must fall. No one can stay at the top of their game forever, especially in the days of social media. With social media, you are quite literally here today and gone tomorrow. So I understand it's a very, very tough game to play, but you know what? Lately I've been feeling like YouTube very well could rightfully take their power back and go back rightfully to the throne that they honestly really deserve. They honestly really deserve to still have the beauty girls in a chokehold and still be the number one reigning spot to get beauty content. Because again, I like the commentary aspect. I love, how, I love how you can get deep. I like how you can have conversations while you're doing this in a way that you kind of can't really do on other platforms. But I've noticed, and this is my first time having this conversation on YouTube. So it's, if it's redundant for some of you, my apologies, but you know, everybody isn't integrated on every platform. So I really want to bring it here and ask what you guys think. But my opinion is that YouTube really kind of shot themselves in the foot with how much they let the beauty space go. And fashion, to be fair, they also did the same thing to fashion. There's no like incentives 
to post that kind of content anymore. I mean, look at how many celebrities like in the fashion world, Naomi Campbell is a great example of, of this. A lot of celebrities don't wake up and just say, mm, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. Some of them do. I will be very honest, some of them do. But a lot of celebrities at one point were joining YouTube and not only joining YouTube, but adding value because there was a push for this. So YouTube would go to these celebrities, these fashionistas, these publications and say, hey, nudge nudge, start a YouTube channel. Now I'm not saying that they paid them. I don't know what's in it. You know, I think what they probably do is these executives and big wigs, it's kind of sort of similar to what happened when I joined TikTok. Like I was very much like, hey, come join us. I did a paid campaign. And then, you know, a lot of people knew TikTok at one point as like the kids app. And so everybody thinks, well, and then adults just took over. It was kind of TikTok's doing as well. So the same thing at one point was happening on YouTube with like fashion brands and celebrities in general. So at one point you just felt like it was a really good ecosystem of good content. And YouTube was making a consistent effort. I saw and I knew in getting different types of talent on the platform. And that's honestly what helps platforms thrive is like meeting with people and encouraging them and giving them like tools for best practices and so on and so forth. So there was definitely a push and it wasn't just going to, I know I mentioned celebs, but it was just an overall, like you should be on YouTube. Like, hey, it's kind of lit, get on here. And that's what they do whenever a, a platform is really popping and when they have like, the funds to support people and have initiatives. Do y'all remember YouTube Black? Remember how YouTube Black used to be like a thing we would, at least here in the US, I know they started doing it in the UK, but like YouTube Black, if you were a creator who lived in maybe like a Wisconsin, don't take offense, where you didn't really know a lot of other creators and you didn't have the opportunity to get invited to a lot of events and you didn't get frequent FaceTime with other people in the industry, when YouTube facilitates those types of things with initiatives like YouTube Black, it really does encourage you to not only keep creating, but you kind of feel like, oh, this platform actually supports their talent, like their creators. Oh, they want me to be here for real, for real? Oh, they're flying me out to meet a bunch of other creators, to cross promote, to collaborate. That's what encourages people to prioritize your loyalty. And actually, well, yeah, kind of your loyalty. I mean, it's also no secret that YouTube has a really, really, really good like rev share and all that stuff. I don't wanna get too technical. I'm just basically saying being a creator is like having any other job. When you're incentivized, when your boss is making you feel good about showing up to work every day and is giving you perks and bonuses and, and trips and da 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 it doesn't necessarily mean, because I know this is where people are gonna go, it does not mean it's going to sway your opinion of the platform or make you less critical of it. It absolutely does not. What I am saying is that it will encourage you to actually be present on the platform and utilize the platform and build a community on the platform because everybody wants to be incentivized for their job, point blank period. And I said all of that to say, you two don't do that no more. <laughs> like, it's crickets. It's very much crickets. It's almost like they've, I hate to say the B word because I don't dislike this creator at all. I think he's great. He obviously has a platform and a model that works, but it's the literal Mr. Beastification of YouTube. If you're not him, it doesn't really seem like YouTube will prioritize you, you know? So um, as a creator, it's not the most encouraging work dynamic, you know? It makes you kind of want to be like, well, fine, man, I'm gonna go over here. And um, we were just talking about this on Instagram and so many people were saying, yeah, it feels very male centric on YouTube. I was the one who brought that up and a lot of people were like, oh my God, light bulb moment. Like you're so right. It does feel very male centric. And yeah, one thing about get ready with me is they will make you thirsty. Yes, they will drink your water. So I think a lot of people are just realizing that aside from, you know, globally what has been happening around the world, which obviously affected a lot of businesses. And you know, that's, that's it's, it's been very unfortunate. It's been a rough, like, four years for a lot of people and businesses and brands. It's just been unfortunate that a platform that a lot of us really adored has made it clear that, you know, their priorities have shifted and beauty content is just not one of those things. And I would like to see that change. Not only because I miss what this platform was because I don't necessarily want to only focus on YouTube again. Nothing's changed on my end. Like I have the same amount of work with all of my other platforms combined than I do with just this one alone. So I'm actually really, really blessed to be in that position and I'm 
very well aware of that. I'm very well aware that like work is scarce and these opportunities are not owed to me and they honestly never will be. So I, I'm absolutely in a very, very amazing position and I'm, I'm super grateful for that. But I just miss YouTube. Like YouTube is just my baby. Like once a YouTuber, you're always a YouTuber. Like I don't even know what else to say, except I'm gonna finish my makeup. <laughs> that was a really long tangent, but I feel like, you know, I just wanted to open the space like I always do whenever I'm doing makeup. I wanted to open the space to see how you guys feel. It's my first time having this particular conversation on YouTube. So, you know, thoughts, prayers, what do you guys think? So this look is very much, it's not giving plain Jane, but like I said, I didn't want to do anything super elaborate or bougie. Kind of want to mimic the look that I wore to an event a couple weeks ago. Riri was there. <laughs> kind of crazy it was my second time meeting her she's everything like you know how some people in person they're just electric like i don't even know how to you're probably like girl what the hell are you talking about that's the only way to describe rihanna's energy is like you literally just want to be around her she is such a good host she's so present she's so personable she's absolutely built for this and it's just no secret that she is famous and she will always be famous because when you meet her, you just get it, you know? Not that I didn't get it before, I absolutely knew. But when you meet her, you're like, who are you? You're so pretty. Can I touch you? I mean, like, not literally, but she's just magnetic. Like, I don't know. I was about to say, I wish I had that, but no, I don't. <laughs> Please get the hell away from me. <laughs> I would probably really struggle mentally and emotionally if I had her level of fame. That would just be a lot to uphold. I can barely handle being a creator, honestly. None of us sign, I mean, those of us that started at day one at the beginning did not really sign up for any perceived level of what we have now. So the fact that I have it is kind of like, I was led astray. I was kind of bamboozled. <laughs> this ain't what I signed up for, bro. Like, nah, I'm just, I'm just a girl. Like, I'm just a girl. Not that I don't enjoy my job, I do. It's, it's a great job. There's just some things that have, I think, changed tremendously from like how it started to where it is now. And many of these are things that personally, fundamentally are not really like, just no, th no, th no, thank you. I'm okay, I'm okay. Your priorities and your beauty routine really do shift as you get older, as your work shifts, as your responsibilities shift. But it's crazy how like I really started this channel to show people how to really work with color and really how to pull up these looks that a lot of people would say didn't work on dark skin. And now I have such a clean, I, I can't say simple, that would be a lie. There's absolutely nothing simplistic about my makeup look, but I've become this like one to three shadow girl. I have zero regrets because like I said, like your style changes, what you need in a routine changes over time and I'm here for it, okay? The makeup that I do today very much gives full glam because i'll tell you one thing it still takes me the same amount of time to get ready <laughs> like it, it's gotta be it's, it's gotta be like an hour and a half realistically that hasn't changed and i definitely don't wear less of it i still wear a lot of makeup child i just realized there's a dress code tonight and i I didn't know luckily i have the color there's a very specific dress code it's copper marigold or white or i'm sure probably all of the above so I'll just warm up this crease area just a little bit, just a little. I was gonna wear black. It's a poolside event, so there might be a little, maybe a little bit, a little bit of a drab. I mean, I love black, don't get it ever twisted, but I'm just saying like, by the pool, girl. <laughs> Let's give me speak easy. I need more sparkles. I need more sparkles. Okay, living for the look so far, but it's about, yeah, that's exactly what I wanna see. Boom. I just wanted some of the silver to really lift off because this isn't a heavy shadow look. So I'm trying to get fresh seawater, girl. You know, like you see, you you see it. Also, one of my favorite trends is mixing metals. And I'll get into it later, but that's why I ordered like some of the gold and silver because I that's like one of my favorite, favorite, favorite jewelry trends is mixing metals. If I wear jewelry, it will be dainty, stackable, and mixed metals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So because I know I will be doing YouTube content again, 
hence why I'm here. And hence, honestly, why I was kind of like practicing with vlogs. Vlogs were really my way of being like, let me see if I like doing this again. And then, you know, I, I wanna give the audience something different. I wanna give the girls something that I don't normally do. And honestly, I was quite surprised. I mean, compared to like my channel's like usual virality, when you try something new, sometimes it can backfire. Sometimes people cannot even see the content at all. To go from like every video being viral to sometimes not even be able to pull like 5,000 views in a video. And I'm not talking crap because this literally could easily eventually happen to me and I'm sure I probably will. But I'm just saying, I'm just grateful that people are still here and people are still watching especially considering how frequently I upload on YouTube. And honestly, I just miss when content was fun. It's not that it's not fun, but it's just, it's just different. It is a wonderful job. However, I do miss when like I just did the videos that I wanna do, you know? So I don't want people to feel like this is a promise that things are gonna go back to how they were and like a whole full upload schedule. I, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. I'm not making no promises. I'm not putting pressure on myself, you know? I just wanna get into it a little bit. Just get into it. All I know is I feel like something shifted. And lately I've been like, reviews in long form. Yeah, let's do it. So far, complexion is looking stunning. Are you a music while you get ready kind of person? Or are you a video watcher while you get ready? Because me, I'm gonna eat up a documentary. I'm gonna eat up a documentary while I get ready. Uh, music is not, like, it's just, I, I need I need to hear a story. I need to hear someone talking. I really, really like a lot of channels about like history. So like my algorithm, you'd probably be like, why in the hell are you watching that? But I actually really love a lot of educational content. I love history. I love deep dives. So I love learning about like certain religions or like sometimes it'll be even like cults, but not because I wanna join obviously, but I just love a good like, wow, why did that person fall for that scam? Or like, how did they get into, like, I just love hearing people's stories. And so I like doing that while I'm getting ready. Maybe that's why I'll be talking so much. <laughs> I feel like why we talk so much when I'm getting ready on YouTube. It's just really easy for me to like fall into that because I already love consuming that kind of content while I'm getting ready anyway. Now watch what my skin is about to do. Step one. So gorge. And also look how little product that just used. I'm actually really loving this format of filming here. It feels really natural and authentic. It's just my first time doing it here. And you know, naturally, because the theme is copper, marigold, and or white, the complexion has to be warm. Like, I'm, it's crazy because I'm using warm and cool tones on my complexion, and then I'm gonna be doing it with the jewelry too. <gasps> Not me breaking all the rules. That's fine, I'm rebellious. Like, typical Jackie fashion is like cool tone metallic or silver eye and then the rest of the complexion is like baby doll blue toned pink but because my dress is so marigold and copper i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do something different and i think i can pull it off because of my undertones quite frankly it is pretty already i'm not gonna lie like i don't i don't hate it this is the first time i've ever used like a peachy colored blush with a metallic eye that's this cool tone I like it. I mean, to be fair, if I really wanted to lean into that freshwater pearl vibe, I feel like I really should use purple, but purple is just so cool tone. Actually, you know that one though. Hold on. I mean, I already have on so much. I'm basically kind of reversing the... That is really pretty. I'm basically kind of reversing the whole sunset blush trend. I don't, I don't, I, I don't hate it. I don't, it looks really pretty. It's also a lot of blush. <laughs> like, I, I did, I did want this to happen. I just had a different vision in my head, but this is pretty. So this will be interesting to see what it looks like when I add the silvery metallic highlighter later. Best way to bake is on top of setting spray, but you cannot do this on wet skin. You absolutely will end up with dry patches. Don't say I didn't warn you. It definitely has to dry down, but it has to be like 95% dry. Like just a little bit of that tackiness that's left over, 
that's when you want to apply that powder. Practice this though, like don't practice it under the eye, maybe do a little patch test like on the corner over here because this is a little bit easier to fix than an area in the middle of your face. The powder just like quite literally will melt into the skin when you do it on top of setting spray. You're still gonna wanna like press it in with your sponge and then that's how you know it's good. It's just perfect. Okay, makeup is really coming together beautifully, but let's be real, it's me, duh, of course it is. <laughs> Has this element of like bold and soft at the same time. If you're new here and you don't know, first of all, subscribe. Only about 60% of people who watch my videos are people that are subscribed. So for everybody else, let's get that number higher. Make sure you subscribe and be here as I figure out whether or not I wanna do this again permanently. <laughs> oh, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. Why have I not been doing peach with silver before? Like, wow, that's so pretty. There's that silver, there's that pearl. Okay, so makeup is pretty much done. So let's go ahead and get dressed. Now it's time to stack the jewelry. I took everything off except for my earrings. I think we need something a little bit of step up. We're missing some pearls. This is the Pandora Essence collection. So everything is really simple, classic, and stackable. And that's my favorite part. But for some reason, I'm just, I just really have this sort of need for my jewelry to be wearable, but also still stuff that I can wear with my nicer outfits. I don't know what it is. I'm just into this like day to night type of jewelry, like transitional jewelry, if that's even a thing. And I really, really feel like this collection embodies it perfectly. I really do. I'm gonna definitely reach for some pearls. I just wanna show you the design style because it's quite stunning. It's like this dented huggy with a pearl drop. This look is like screaming for some pearls. So that, oh yeah, that's really pretty. And something about dainty jewelry just, I don't know, it just does it for me. I'd rather the big statement pieces be on my wrist, but when it comes to like earrings and necklaces, I like them to be simple, clean, stackable, and wearable, which is exactly what this collection is. I mean, that is so stunning. It's timeless. It kind of reminds me of like the infinity symbol. This piece is actually my favorite. It's again, sort of that dented hammered style, but you can stack it. So I have two and one on top of the other. Ah, oh, it just looks so beautiful. I'm gonna save this one for another day. But look, at least you get to see what the other pieces look like. I'm actually gonna do, I think, the silver and gold. Another pearl in the middle. This is absolutely stunning. Okay, 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 okay. This is fun, but now I'm like, it's hard to choose. It's hard to choose because they're all so stackable and fun. Okay, I'm gonna, this one's very formal. I think I'm actually going to do the triple pearl. This is all one piece. So it looks like a bunch of different rings, which is also what I really love because you're basically kind of cheating. It looks like you're wearing a stack, but really it's one ring. This is one ring, this is two. Okay, so if I move this one to this hand, then I can do that, I like that. Now we need one for this hand. We don't have any silver yet. And that same ring that I showed you earlier, I just wanted to show you it does come in silver and that like infinity symbol style. And then there's two rings that are hooped together. Oh my God, that looks so pretty. It's giving freshwater pearls straight out of the ocean, which is I think very fitting for like not only my overall outfit, but this collection is inspired by nature and it's supposed to be easy to wear, easily stackable. There's so many pieces in this collection that are like everyday wearable. I, th I honestly thought these pieces were gonna be way too dressy, but they did a really good job incorporating some more casual pieces, huggies. I love huggies. You can just kind of throw them on and get out the house. <gasps> Oh my God, I forgot about my necklace. Wait, and I need to show you guys the box. It's really, really pretty in this collection. Of course I lied. I forgot I have a pair of pearl studs. Let me just try on the necklace first before I get too excited. Gorgeous, stunning. I love that it's heart shaped and somehow it still reminds me of the infinity symbol. It just needs a shorter chain, but this is, this is a really nice chain too. The gold pieces are 14 karat gold plated and the entire collection is inspired by free flowing forms of nature, which I like because I've, I've recently discovered in the past like six months or so that I really am a pearl girl. I really do like pearls. And the box of the collection I think is adorable. Really, really pretty and dainty and pink. Who doesn't love pink? If you guys want to check out the Pandora Essence collection, you can go to the link in my bio. I hope you guys enjoy this collection as much as I do. So pretty. This is exactly the kind of necklace I would absolutely stack. I really hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me today. This was fun. And thank you, Pandora, for being a sponsor of this video. I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.